Hello there, everyone. This is Valerie White Williams with Vocal Splendor Studios. And today I'd like to talk a bit more about charts. And last week I talked about how the band Best Singers have charts. And I actually filmed a video that I'm going to upload in a bit. And it's Rolf Sanchez, a reaction to his song Hotel California. And everybody knows that song, but he did his own take on it. And as I film the video, I actually point out where you can see the band with the charts on iPads. And if you watch really carefully when they show the band, you can see those charts. So here's the deal. There's a difference between a chart and a score. So when you're in a orchestra, you actually will say you're playing um, clarinet clarinet one, you're going to have all the music written down for clarinet one. And it's exactly written exactly what you are going to play on that clarinet part. And that's how the orchestra's parts go. And then the conductor has the master score and you see all the parts in there. So that's how they conduct. But usually for these kind of band situations, sometimes there are scores and um, if there's a, a more specific parts with strings or multiple horns, but typically people use what we call charts or lead sheets. So what a chart or lead sheet is, is I'm going to show you an example. It is typically the chord, the structure of the song with the chords that go along with it. Now, these are not the chord charts you can get online. A lot of one of my friends called them cowboy chords where they have the lyrics and they have the chords over the, the lyrics, those are really rough because they don't have the musical structure. Music is organized into measures. So those cowboy chords kind of give you a rough estimate of the chords. And oftentimes the chords aren't even correct because it really depends on who puts those chords together. The thing about chord structure is that you have to understand chord theory to actually hear all the intricacies of certain chords. And sometimes chords are wrong because it's like you can't hear what you don't know. So if it's a really intense jazz chord, people don't recognize it and they can't do it correctly. So what I'm going to do is show you what chart looks like. So a chart looks like this. This is a book. It's my book. It's called Standard, Real Book Standards. This is really pretty expensive. This is one of the top of the line, what we call fake books. And what a fake book is, is, is a bunch of lead sheets, basically. So this is a song that's really well known. It's been around a lot. And hopefully you can see this and it won't be opposite. But this is a chart to something to talk about. It's the Bonnie Raitt song. It's been done a lot and I'm just gonna put it up here so you guys can see it. So here's the title. And this one actually has some little extra things that they've added. These are the backing vocals. So they arranged this to add backing vocals. There's three part harmony. And this is the intro, uh, see? And we've got this rhythm and this rhythmic hits up here show where the rhythm is supposed to go. And these are the chords. And, and to be honest, this is kind of a tricky song. The chords are not super easy. It, it changes into lots of different keys. And then it has the lyrics right here. So all the hits are here. So you can read through a chart like this. And then it turns the page like this. And then we have that. And this one actually has a rhythm section part. So it has all the rhythm sections. So this is what the band is going to be looking at. Something like this. So they're going to get the rhythmic hits, they're going to get the chord changes, and they're going to write in the improvisation section, which is going to be right here. See, we just have the chord changes. And so if anyone's playing a solo, a guitarist or a horn player, they're going to play over those changes. So that's kind of how charts go. We have all kinds of charts. Now, that's kind of a more of a fancier chart. It has all the vocal parts and it has the arrangement of horn hits. But sometimes there's just plain basic lead sheets, which are just chords. So I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you another lead sheet. I should have had this ready to go. But there is a software program that a lot of musicians use. It's a, actually an app. And it's called Real B. Yeah, it's iReal B. That's what it's called. I'm going to pull it up for you if I can get here. So you can watch me pull it up. And it works better on the iPad. So a lot of musicians are using iPads on stage instead of music's 
big music stands because it looks so much prettier and it just looks cleaner. So they have it. In fact, a lot of music stands will have or will have like a little thing that you can hook on so you can have an iPad. But what I'm going to show you is a song using the iPad, but I'm going to show on my phone. And this is another version of a chart. Okay. So here's a song. So it looks like this. Here's another version of a chart. This is after you've gone. And so people can actually use this on the bandstand and they just count it off. And there you go. There's all the chords right there. And it's super easy. So this is really what a lot of instrumentalists use on the bandstand for jam sessions or just to write a chart. So when those performers sing and they create their own arrangements with the band, someone's written out the whole structure. So that's the way you do it when you don't have time to rehearse as much. Now, of course, they do rehearse for that show, but from what I've told, there's actually four days where they film the whole entire show. That's a lot. That's tons of songs. They probably do two, like each week that they perform, they probably do the, two of them in a day. And so there's lots of singing and lots of practicing, but the practice sessions are going to be fairly short because they just don't have much time. And But if there's a good chart, if the singer comes prepared, knows their part, and then there's a chart that the instrumentalists and singers can follow along with, it doesn't take that much time to put together because, again, they have the skill set, how to play. They are reading the chart, and everybody kind of knows what they're doing. And so my experience with this is, or well, obviously I haven't been on Best Singers, but I've been in lots of locations and places where we have a very quick rehearsal time and we have a chart. So I used to sing as a professional soloist at church and I've sung at all kinds of churches in the Seattle area. And what happens in that time is that we really have about 15 minutes to put the song together. That's it. 15 minutes. We don't have time. So the way that works is we all have to prepare in advance. We know our parts. And then we rehearse for 15 minutes to put it together, work through the tough parts, work through the things that are a little issue, and then we're on. That's how it goes. That's all you get. <laughs> so you really have to be prepared and have skills to do that. And that's how a lot of these gigs are. And you'd be surprised at how amazing it can sound when you have really skilled, prepared people, and then we have that chart. So that's how it is. So learning to read music is really key. Now, it's not like the people who don't know how to read music are not good musicians. Some of them play amazingly, and there's a lot of musical traditions that seem to be more traditional, I should say, passed down by ear. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of bluegrass, a lot of blues, a lot of rock. There's a lot of traditional music that has been passed on in an oral tradition. They don't write it down. However, when you're dealing with a show like this where we have limited rehearsal time, you have to use charts. You have to be able to read them and prepare on your own because we don't have time to practice a lot. In fact, my husband also used to have a church job where they would have guest singers come in and it was always a constant struggle because, again, they had a short edition window. They had a, a top band of session players and everybody had to have a chart. And so he would audition the singers. They'd contact him and if they didn't have a chart. No go. They're not singing. It's not going to work because they don't have hours of time to put together a song that's complicated when there's no chart. So the singers had to have their own charts. Now, here's another thing. If you don't know how to make a chart, you don't know how to do a chart, guess what? You pay someone to make them. Because I know a lot of great singers that don't have that skill set. They're really wonderful singers, but they want to gig. They want to perform. And so you find out who can make a chart and you pay somebody to make them. And a lot of singers do that. They pay somebody to create a chart for them so they can take their songs out and perform them. So that's the other solution. You just pay someone to make a chart and then you can also go out and sing. So, you know, I had someone push back, said I'm snobby and, and that you have to be a really well-trained singer to be any good. No, I don't agree with that at all. There's tons of amazing singers that don't know how to read music and they have amazing skills. It's only for this type of performance where we have a limited rehearsal window 
we have to do something very complicated, that's when we need to have the charts. And that's what they're for. It's like a blueprint. It's like you're going to build a house and go, oh, I'm just going to make it up myself. I'm just going to do how I remember it. I saw my dad build a house. I think I'm going to do what I want. No, that's not how it works. We have to have a blueprint and it has to be approved. All right. Thanks for listening to me about that. I'm hugely on the whole best singers kick. I love it. We've got two more shows and then I'll be back to normal doing all kinds of other stuff. But I'm really enjoying the show so, so much. And I'm going to miss it when it's gone. All right. Thanks for listening. Um, I can't see you. W. Yes. Thank you for listening. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. And I love all musicians. And just so you know, I think everybody needs to do music. Do it whatever level you want. It's all good in my book. All right. Take care. Bye.